This is a real photo. Um, she's certainly um, not giving any indication that she's fabricating anything around this photograph. We've got some impression management going on here if she's trying to make us um, believe her. Uh, is that because she fears being disbelieved and she's telling the truth? Hi, I'm Cliff Lansley from the Emotional Intelligence Academy, as many of you know, because I'm speaking to those who are involved in scanner coding. So we've been asked by our students, uh, can you just give us an over-the-shoulder uh, walkthrough as if you were coding? So how, how do we approach this? Uh, so we set up the studio, and I'm, I'm just going to um, attack this as if um, a client has sent me a clip of a video. And then we're recording this so you can see the stages and the considerations that we go through. So uh, normally I do this silently, but I'll be voicing some of my thoughts and some of the things I'm doing just so I can share it with you. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I've been given a one and a half minute video of Virginia Roberts. And this is from an, um, an Australian documentary uh, from 30 Minutes, where she's giving her side of the story to, uh, relating to her claims and allegations against Prince Andrew. And uh, so I've got this 90 minutes. And uh, before I start, uh, what I'll do is just go through uh, the, the setup. So what you'll see from, um, from, uh, from the desk here is I try to keep things simple. I've got the tool. The main tool is the laptop. So I use uh, Apple um, Mac, Macintosh Apple uh, units uh, because I like the scrub and it's easy with the video. Uh, I also use a, um, a, a the, we're in the lab now and we've got a big screen, but in, um, in where I'm doing the uh, office work and analysis work, I have a Samsung curved screen and that's set above, above the, uh, the laptop. So normally I'd have a screen similar place to where this big screen is here. So I've got the um, large uh, images on the big screen. But the small small's enough. Uh, if I'm working away, I can work just with a Mac, Mac, Mac screen here. I've opened up the video, um, so you need a .mov or a MP4. I've opened this up with QuickTime, QuickTime 10. Uh, I prefer QuickTime 10 as a player. And you'll see on the screen here, we've got a, a menu button. Now that can get in the way. So the first thing uh, I do with the menu button is stick it away to where there's not a lot of action going on. But first thing I do is uh, I'll, I'll zoom in. And on my uh, settings here, I've got control uh, with a two finger scroll. So I'm zooming into the menu bar here, um, which is the volume and the uh, duration. And you'll see this has got from zero up to 132. And the reason I do that is for my note taking. So on the desk here, I've got a blank sheet of paper with a line down the middle. And I know I'm going to be taking notes and I go left to right. Uh, it's just natural uh, in terms of writing and it works for me. Um, some people take a different approach, but this, this works for me. And I'll put a little mark on the center, center line here of zero. This is seconds. And then um, on the right hand side, I've got 132, one minute and 32 seconds. So this clip, is one minute 32, and as a rough guideline in planning my time, uh, it takes about an hour to code a minute of video if I'm doing the annotation and the reporting. Uh, but I'm gonna be uh, summarizing some of those processes for you. You don't need to watch me typing. Uh, so we've got the uh, naught to 132. So that's about an hour and a half. So I've, I would plan my time in isolation, avoid interruptions, uh, switch off the, uh, all the notifications on the, on the computer and on the phone, and so um, for about an hour and a half. And so the result would, or my goal is, in one and a half hours, I will have a populated uh, CCC chart, as many of our students know, which is collect, consider, conclude. Uh, so that's almost like the document or report that we would send to a client. So this, this bar is important to me, but I don't want to see it while the video is playing. So let me come back down, uh, zoom back out. Uh, and this zoom, this zoom is not just good for the menu bar. If I want to look at Victoria's nose, then uh, you know I can zoom in at whatever area of the screen I need to do that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll um, I'll select that, bring it, drag it down to the right hand side, uh, and if that gets in the way, I'll move it up to the top. But I want to be able to see the seconds, and uh, I also, but I don't want it to get in the way. So that that's the uh, laptop, a blank sheet of paper. What you'll also notice on the desktop is a coding sheet. And for those who've been through the SCAMS coder system know that the 27 pins have got sub pins and there's 136 of those which um, go across as our tier two. 
So if I want to look at a, a face code, I know I've got 17 subcodes that correlate with the action units for facts. And so I can use those in the end report but I usually wouldn't go to that detail when I'm annotating live and watching the document. So on here, is, this will be a mess when I finish, I promise you. So this will just be a, a scribble. I'll have little, um, maybe some numbers, maybe some figures, but let's see um, on the video. So it's in two halves. The top half, I normally catch symbols, maybe some codes, there may be scans codes. I wouldn't go to tier two here, just tier one, because I'll come back afterwards to add the detail. So the tier one codes are F1, F2, F3. I might even just put body or illustrator or short, short list that. We'll see. But at the bottom is what was she saying? What stage in the video? I've got to tie it together. So the bottom half, I usually put a word or something that helps to remind me where I am. But what helps as well is I've also got me naught to 132. I'll divide it into thirds. So I've got 30 seconds here. I've got a minute round about here. So my hand's going to be traveling across with the video to track the progress. So remember halfway through the video, I'm gonna be about here. And um, so I'm gonna be gradually moving over, which helps me to keep my eyes on the screen. Now, of course, with the video, I can replay it, uh, but uh, having this approach uh, is, is helpful. So here we go. Uh, I've got the video. Um, context in terms of, I'll usually get a brief context, so the client will send us, this is the video, this is the date, this is what's happened before, this is the subject, and in this case, uh, I will have done a little bit of research on Virginia Roberts, she's now married, uh, Virginia Jufri, uh, the fact that she's Australian, living in Australia, but she started in California, that's useful for culture, I need to know, you know, what's the likelihood of her gestures meaning X or Y, and I can check this on the fly. Uh, but uh, uh, she was born in America, so she's an American individual who's got married and moved to Australia and now has three children. So uh, she's about 39 um, as she's uh, doing these documents. Well, 39 today, so 36 when she was doing this. Um, this was 2019 when this video was shot. So that's as much as I need to know. And sometimes uh, I, I deliberately uh, don't go into the background because going into the background can create bias. And so as long as I've got a working framework, that's enough um, at the start of my hour and a half. So I'm now into that. I've explained what's gone through my mind. And uh, within five minutes, I will press the space bar on my laptop and play the video. And I'm going to play that through full for you now, and then you see what I see. Because I play it full speed, normal speed, full audio, um, full video. And the, I don't normally use headphones uh, because in the, uh, in the isolation of the office zone where I am, it's quiet and I don't like the uh, sweaty earlobes. So normally I wouldn't use he headphones, but in the studio I'm, I'm doing that. So let's uh, watch the video. Virginia has named the men she was trafficked to in documents lodged with the courts. The name that has caused the greatest splash is Prince Andrew. The pair captured in this now infamous photograph, taken in 2001. So as you know, Prince Andrew denies the allegations against him and he says that this photo is a fake, that he was never there and that he's not his arm and they're not his fingers. Those are his fingers, that is Andrew. This photo has been verified as an original and it's been since given to the FBI and they've never contested that it's a fake and I know it's real. And he needs to stop with all of these lame excuses. We're sick of hearing it. This is a real photo. And that was the first time you met him? And that's the very first time I met him. And that's right before I was abused by him. Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell took the 17-year-old Virginia to London to party with Prince Andrew. Then we went to Club Tramp and he danced with me and, and he sweats a lot and he smells funny. Um, and, then he, and then we get in the car and um, Elon tells me in the car that I have to do what I do for Jeffrey for Prince Andrew. And that's when I learned what was going to happen. How many times were you trafficked to him? Three times. Okay, so that's, that's through full time. I'm, uh, I'm noticing um, some interesting behavior. And uh, what's going through my mind right now is there seems to be two, two uh, patterns here. 
uh, the first half when she's talking about the photograph, uh, what I'm noting down here is that she's illustrating and B2 is an illustrator, so that's the body, so second indicator, second pin is, indi is the um, illustrator, and I'm putting ticks. So the ticks are telling me that the, uh, the synchronization, uh, they're okay. Uh, so the, the illustrations are okay. They're, they're in line with the emphasis of the words um, when she's uh, talking about the um, original photo, and I know. And uh, that's the language she was using, which I've dropped down here on the bottom half as we're approaching and going across 30 seconds. And then she moves back again uh, to the uh, illustrators uh, using a head and uh, using the a nod of the head and a fold of the body. She's emphasizing the key point she's making, uh, but she's uh, split second timing is very, very good. Uh, she's doing a single nod. When she, when she makes a point, she'll make a head nod, yes. Uh, but just once and it'll be synchronized and only one. And um, so I'm, I'm trying to get a baseline here because there are no clusters of behavior. I'm not picking up anything that suggests uh, something is at odds with a claim here. Um, I'm bearing in mind at this point, what's going through my mind is the ABC. So the account is she's describing a photograph. She seems quite positive, a tone of voice or emphasis is, is bang on. I'm okay with voice. Uh, the, there's nothing in the words uh, that you know, have stuck out as a red flag or as a pin. I notice she's got glassy eyes, and um, this glassy eyes is throughout. And so I'm wondering, because I may need to look at the full documentary, maybe other documentaries, is this glassiness uh, because she's upset? Uh, probably not, because it's, it's throughout, it's not just... Um, it's not tearing at uh, one point, and I can't see any support in um, uh, behaviour to do with sadness around the account that she's making here. So is she wearing contact lenses, maybe? Has she, has she had a bad night the night before, lack of sleep? Uh, has she got an irritation or an eye condition? Um, uh, so the, is it the... She's in a studio, this is a documentary. Uh, so uh, is it the lamps? I'm in a studio now and, and we need powerful lamps um, for recording. So sometimes that, that can dry the eyes. Is there air conditioning in the room? So these are all the hypotheses that are going through my mind and I'm building. And I don't need to write these down and I don't write these down. Uh, but it's, it's the thought process in parallel to what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. But that first half feels consistent. Uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, anything to worry about. And she's certainly... Um, not giving any indication that she's fabricating anything around this photograph. And um, what's going through, I'm, I'm, I'm holding back my bias here, because what I'm going through in my mind is I know that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's in prison and she's had two documentaries filmed, not released yet. We're in January 2023. And uh, she's already reported, I've not seen the video, uh, that these photographs are fake. She's supporting Prince Andrew and accusing Virginia of lying about the photograph. I don't think so. Uh, this, um, it's only one clip, but there's no evidence here of her claims about this photograph being genuine to be flawed. So I'm feeling okay with it. And it's only behavior. You know, we've not got the FBI originals. We've not analyzed this under the photograph under a microscope, whether it's faked. So I've not got that evidence. I'm not interested in that. We're just behavior analysts. So from a behavior, this first half um, is sitting fairly pretty. And it's giving me some information into a baseline. When she's being affirmative, she's nodding this way, which is in line with um, uh, a lot of, it, of countries in the Western cultures where this means yes and this means no. I'm, I'm, I'm baseline her on, on the fly. Uh, she's not blinking that much, uh, so that might be uh, to do with again, contact lenses, or she's not reading, you know, she's speaking to the interviewer, maybe she's sp focusing on the interviewer, maybe she's checking whether she's being believed. Uh, at this point, it's just question marks. Um, but the second half, I'm picking up, um, as you'll see on my notes here, uh, a lot of uh, eye closures, and uh, these are blinks. Uh, blink is one twentieth of a second, but I'm getting some uh, eye closures. And she's doing this when she's describing this linear story so I've got CBCA in my head here. Of it's a linear story. We, you know, we went into the club and he's sweating and he's smelling and we, this is what we do. Then we came out and we go in the taxi. And she said, can you do the same that you do to Jeffrey on Andrew? 
that's the narrative uh, that she's offering in the second half of this video. So I'm seeing a lot of eye closures. I'm so, I also picked up some single-sided shoulder shrugs, which uh, that's my little gesture there of a single-sided shoulder shrug. Um, and the, uh, the, this, there's also a, a lag in head nods. So unlike the first half about the photograph, I'm seeing some head nods. Um, sometimes five or six of them, we can count them later. Uh, we've only had one pass. But uh, she'll, she'll say something and then she'll carry on with the head nod, not micro, not micro gesture, but a quite a big head nod, almost trying to convince us. And so that goes into impression management. So, so here, you know, I'm thinking C3, we've got some impression management going on here if she's trying to make us um, believe her. Uh, is that because she fears being disbelieved and she's telling the truth? Or is that because she's uh, making a false allegation uh, and she wants the interviewer and the audience, of course, this is uh, probably an international audience, not just Australian, to believe her too. So um, 24, uh, you, I've, I've jumped codes here. I've used 24 a couple of times. You'll see in the boxes, AU24. Um, that's my shorthand for a lip press. She presses her lips a couple of times uh, together, not rolled in, not anger. Um, so why is she uh, pressing the, the lips? Is she swallowing? Sometimes that happens to close the mouth to seal it while you swallow, uh, which could be a sign of anxiety, not sure. Uh, is she uh, controlling what she says? Uh, because uh, the a little bit of context that I checked into is this is a documentary. The producers and the directors will be uh, gearing the documentary uh, to, for the purpose. And the purpose is to give your side of the story, Virginia, um, because uh, Andrew, Prince Andrew is denying your accusations. So do you want to give your story? And uh, that's the purpose of this documentary. So she'll be getting an advice and direction from the floor. And she's also well represented by a huge legal firm who's been working with her a while. And we know she's had success in 2015. This is four years later. Uh, she had uh, allegedly a net worth of about four and a half million, um, which didn't come from um, uh, any, we've not found any other source of income apart from the court cases and her normal work. So uh, again, that's squeaking in and I'm feeling my own bias. Hang on a minute. She's going to court to claim money. Uh, therefore, is that making me feel like she's a false claimer to get the money? And what's balancing that is I also know from, you can check this on Wikipedia, that um, she's active with some groups to try and handle sex trafficking. And, uh, and she supports the victims. So she herself has been a victim from age of seven. Uh, she was, um, she left home. She was on the street. She was in foster homes. She, uh, around about 16, she was working, um, and she was trafficked um, by an individual when she was about 16. And then she was found by Ghislaine Maxwell in a, uh, doing massage in one of Donald Trump's um, holiday resorts. And she was recruited to do massage for Jeffrey Epstein. And so all her life, she's had a troubled life. She was abused from seven by a family friend, allegedly. And um, that's continued through life. She's not had a safe um, base. Uh, and it seems she's been taken advantage of. And so your heart has got to go out to people who have had that kind. And, and so I've got compassion going through my veins at this point. But also, there's a, there seems to be clusters here. And uh, I'm going to go back through now to see whether the eye closures and the shoulder shrugs um, the head shakes and the convincing are clustering into something that um, should make us really question the accusation in the second half, which is about her going to Club Trump and uh, dancing with him. Uh, this is Prince Andrew and having sex with him. So uh, I'd take the, uh, take the bar back to the beginning. A cute thing you can do with uh, trackpads on Apple is you can just put two fingers and scroll it back. I love Apple and I, and I love the trackpads. So I can scroll through, I see, I can see what's happening in real time, but I can also fast motion it. Because sometimes fast motioning can give you some indications of changes in gestures. But this first part, I'm just going to check the synchronization here again. Not his fingers. Those are his fingers. That is Andrew. This... Those are his fingers. That is, his, that, that is Andrew. Um, and the fingers are illustrating and punctuated almost like a conductor's baton 
with the words. That is Andrew. This photo has been verified. She's concentrated on the interviewer. There's politeness going on. Uh, is it checking she's being believed uh, because she fears being disbelieved? Uh, we mentioned that before. We don't know because uh, we can't ask a question. So we can't be sure. Remember, we can only hypothesize. Uh, there's tightness on her forehead. Um, um, I'm watching for facial movements here. And there's not a lot of movements on the forehead. So I've got a question mark around, uh, is she using Botox? Um, oh, it's a little bit tight on the, above the brows. Uh, the cheeks are um, a nice shape. They, they could have fillers or maybe Botox. I've got, to, I've got to bear that in mind. So it's a consideration as I'm uh, going through this. Uh, you can see there, we're early in the video and you've got the glassy eyes. So she's not sad here. She's describing something quite affirmative. So uh, we, I'm not going to misjudge those as tears that are connected with sadness or high emotion. Been verified as an original and it's been since given to the FBI and they've never contested that it's a fake. And I know it's real. So she's claiming that the original was taken by um, Epstein using a camera that she gave him uh, so it was on her little Kodak camera, allegedly. This is um, when I've dig, dug back into this. She's had it developed, and some, somehow the FBI have ended up with the original uh, because the FBI were interested in um, interviewing Prince Andrew over this too, as well as the civil cases that are going on. So, so she's claiming the FBI have the original, um, and this is, obviously, this will be a copy of the original. Um, and we know Prince Andrew's claiming copies of copies of copies. Anything can be fake these days with um, deep fake. Uh, but uh, that's not for us. We're looking at the behavior. The FBI. And they've never contested that it's a fake. And I know it's real. And I know it's real. And she gestured just once uh, to reinforce the point make. So this is the illustrator's B2. Uh, it's not a pin because it's consistent with the account. Um, so I'm ignoring that. I might make a note of it like I've done here in the report I'm producing uh, because that helps to give us in this short clip some baseline behavior that we can contrast and compare with what comes later. And he needs to stop with all of these lame excuses. We're sick of hearing it. No, that was interesting. I picked it up and didn't make notes. Uh, but she's referring to herself. Uh, she's putting her hand on her chest, self-reference, but she's using the plural. She's saying, uh, you know, we. So this kind of... Um, points to, well, who's we? And if I was the interviewer, um, you know, I might put that in my pocket and go back to that later. I guess, and I hypothesize, uh, that we would be her and her advisors, which are probably the legal firm that's, that's working for her and eight other um, alleged victims of the Epstein empire. Uh, but... And he needs to stop with all of these lame excuses. We're sick of hearing it. So we're sick of hearing it. Um, so it could be support, it could be a partner. Uh, we don't know who we is, um, but we've got to factor in the possibility that she's being advised in a highly skilled way uh, in preparation for the legal battle that's coming. And uh, the legal battle that's coming, as, as you know, ended up in Prince Andrew paying her 12, well, allegedly around 12 million uh, dollars or pounds um, to prevent it going to court. Uh, so the, the amount isn't specified in the documents, that's just um, reported uh, by the press, but we know the press can be wrong. Uh, so that's been settled and there'll be some form of um, uh, hush agreement on that. That doesn't mean Prince Andrew is guilty, uh, but it means uh, things could be cleaned away, uh, ready for all the things that were happening with the royal family at that point. This is a real photo. And that was the first time you met him? And that's the very first time I met him. And that's right before I was abused by him. So she's mentioned abuse at the end. I made a note of this word, and that's where we got the lip press. So the AU24 is a lip press. It's been pushed up by the chin. The chin boss is dimpled. Um, so we know that's uh, being, being pushed up to... Is she, is she self-hushing? Uh, is it just the end of a sentence? Uh, and she's... That she's used to media. She's, she's done a few documentaries. Uh, does she know she needs sound bites and needs a little full stop on it? Could be. Uh, we don't know. Then this transitions now into the second part. So I'm interested on... Um, Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell took the 17-year-old Virginia to London 
to party with Prince Andrew. So 17 year old uh, under UK law, um, uh, that's not illegal, uh, but it is in America. And uh, so she's seen there's sex three times, uh, one in London and uh, two over in the US, the private island in New York, um, where it's illegal to have uh, sex above um, 16. Um, uh, sorry, less than 18. And so um, uh, it's a crime in the US, but in the UK, it's not a crime, but it's not good for Prince Andrew. So uh, sometimes you'd have to check, uh, you know, what's the, what's the legal age, uh, a bit of background. I remember when I first looked at this, going into checking the legal age. Dean and Glenn Maxwell took the 17-year-old Virginia to London to party with Prince Andrew. So she's been taken to London. Um, the purpose of the trip, allegedly, is to party with Andrew, Prince Andrew. And one of um, Virginia's claims is that uh, Jeffrey Epstein, who killed himself, allegedly, in prison after he was arrested, um, was uh, gathering video footage of um, very well-to-do uh, individuals who were getting um, services from his staff. And um, uh, Virginia's saying that was uh, sex trafficking. And uh, Andrew was named as one of the individuals. Uh, there's been a couple of others named, one retracted um, mistakes apparently in memory. Uh, but the, uh, this one went all the way through to, to court. Uh, but they're now in London. And um, let's just, I'll be coming back now and playing this again to remind me, what was she saying about Club Trump? Then we went to Club Tramp and so we've got uh, behavior here, which is uh, pulled up straight away. So we've got a single-sided shoulder shrug, if you look on the, her left. Uh, the right-hand shoulder's off camera. Uh, well, I'm normally looking to the bottom of the screen as well, because sometimes you can see hands popping up to pick up hand shrugs, not here. Um, you've got to be careful with jackets. Is the shoulder moving because she's moving her hands, or is it a shoulder shrug? So this looks like a single-sided shoulder shrug. And it's synchronized with a head shake, no. It's not micro, uh, but there's very little reason to suggest why would you shake your head, no, consciously, um, when you're making an affirmative claim. So that qualifies as a pin. The question mark would be around the size of it, because I normally only put the micro head shake, no's, when it's less than a centimeter on the tip of the nose, and this is just over that. But we've also got an eye closure, and. Um, uh, how do I know it's an eye closure? Uh, well, what I can do with my forward and backward arrows, which I use a lot, is count the frames. There's 25 or 24 frames a second, depends on the play you've got. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This, they've opened at uh, 10 frames. 10 divided by 25 is two fifths of a second, well over the threshold for a blink. So this is an eye closure. I'm confident I can code this as a, a B5 eye closure. So um, uh, I didn't use uh, the B codes here. Um, I used uh, the <laughs> my dog's dinner of uh, notation by two circles with a line through. And uh, that tells me eye closure. Ramp and he danced with me. No, these, these are getting smaller. So this, he danced with me. So when she's making the claim of the dance with me, uh, We've got the head shake, no. And there seems to be some movement from now on her right shoulder, maybe a single-sided shoulder shrug on the right. Not too sure. I probably wouldn't note that because it's not clear enough. Dance with me and... But he danced with me with a micro gesture, no, she's negating it. The volume's come down a little bit. Um, so I'd probably pick up a note with a V and narrow down of uh, what's going on there. Uh, she's looking, uh, looking down. I, I don't get too hung up with eye accessing cues. You know, is she having an internal dialogue or is she left-handed, right-handed? We don't know. Is she? Is this emotion she's reflecting on? Uh, I don't get carried away with that. The evidence is not good enough for us to put pins against eye direction. So um, a change of eye direction is is important, but this seems to fit with the account. So I'm, I'm not going there. He sweats a lot. And he's Smells funny. So he sweats a lot. He smells funny. Now, um, uh, I'm 
think you know, this is contextual embedding and uh, in CBCA. So on our C uh, content three codes, uh, what we know is um, those who lie uh, will not include uh, context in their descriptions as much as they do when they're truth telling. So is this a sig signal of truth that she did experience that? Or has she been well coached to try and color the story in 3D uh, by the lawyers to say, uh, can you put some detail in um, to uh, help give credibility to your story? So are the lawyers groomed in CBCA and statement analysis? Uh, good lawyers would be. Um, have they coached her? Maybe. So it's a bit of a long shot, um, but it's a hypothesis that I'd want to check out in terms of um, uh, is she recalling something she's experienced or is she relaying a message that's been constructed by an advisor? We don't know because we're not asking the questions, which reminds me, um, I would never judge lie or, or truth on a video because we can only be 65% confident. That's a ballpark figure when we're looking at a video, because we can't ask the questions. And the quality of the questions are problematic in two ways. One, she, the interviewer isn't a forensic interviewer, and this isn't a forensic interview. Um, number two, this is a biased program. It's only looking at one side of the story. It's not pushing and challenging the claims being made. So it's, this is a weak video for conclusion, so I, I wouldn't do that. It smells funny. Uh We've got the eyes closing again. Uh, this one looks longer. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four. It's well, one and a half seconds, and she's gone out of shot, so it could be longer. So it's a minimum of a one and a half seconds. And normally I'd put the uh, duration when I'm doing the write-up later, uh, I put the duration in there. Um, but we've got the eye closure. There's some movement from the uh, hands, is she illustrating or is this a, is this a rotation in terms of um, the uh, hand shrug? Probably not a hand shrug, it doesn't seem to be rotating, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, touching of the brow. Again, some behavioural analysts will uh, make a meal out of face touching. Uh, we can ignore that. There's nothing significant. The evidence isn't good on that meaning anything that's of help to us here. That was funny. Um... Um, she, the, the fluency has, has dropped off, so I'm probably going to add in um, S1 here with the erms. And I'll look at the transcript because uh, I usually get supplied with a transcript from uh, the, the cases that we, we do for the uh, media because we, we didn't look at this for a client, we did it for a media program. So I'll look at the transcript and, uh, and uh, maybe even highlight the erms in red, uh, cut and paste and replace and check is the, does the density and frequency of erms and gap fillers increase? And um, uh, I'll check the transcripts as well, of course, as you all know. And then, and then we get in the car and... Um... Lick, lick. Sorry, a lip, lick. Uh, so um, so uh, some people call that a tongue push that she's pushing. Uh, when people do that, they're pushing away the person who's talking to them. Uh, be careful with that um, myth. What's usually happen, happening here is the anxiety is increasing, the digestion system's turned off. This looks like anxiety. Uh, is it because she's talking about something sensitively and traumatic is one of the considerations that's going through my mind, ready for the write-up? Is it be because she's on camera and this is a documentary? Uh, or is it because she's uh, constructing a lie and trying to get away with it? Those are three strong hypotheses. Uh, or is she just dried her mouth up uh, because she's not had a drink for a long while? Uh, has she got some condition um, that's causing that? that amount of dryness, so she needs to moisten the lips. Is she self-conscious, wants to portray herself uh, in a, uh, with keeping the, is it, is, is it a makeup feature? Um, but uh, the, the problem with these claims is it's punctuated too often with the shoulder shrugs and the eye closures and the head-shaped nose. So we've got this cluster of three happening every time she emphasizes or makes a key point in the second half of the video. Never happened in the first half. Are that I have to do 
what I do for Jeffrey for Prince Andrew. And so a little shoulder shrug I saw there again, tiny. Um, you can see it there. I'll, I'll probably go just with the left and right arrows to find the peak of that. But you can see there, that's a shoulder shrug of about a centimetre that's synchronised with the eye closure and, that's when and I the accentuated illustrators afterwards. So um, some, some clusters are coming in now which is, is raving, raising red flags of, um, uh, around this second claim that she went to Club Tramp, she danced with him and they made arrangements for her to have sex with him uh, afterwards. Could be true. Uh, but there's sufficient um, doubt in my mind from what we've just seen um, for us to explore that further. What was going to happen? How many times were you trafficked to him? Three times. So if you look at those head nods, she's, she's, she's not speaking uh, here three times and then one, two, three, four, five, six. She's pinched her mouth again slightly. It looks like a smile, but it, um, it's not a zygmatic major, that. It's not, um, it's, it's not a smile, it's a, it's a lip press. And uh, it's probably just the natural end to the sentence, or is she making sure she doesn't overspeak and uh, use anything that might be misunderstood? Uh, we don't know. Uh, but the, uh, the number of uh, head nods uh, fits in again with the uh, convinced towards the end, which is uh, impression management, S3, towards the end. So that's the product of my work <laughs> in about 15 minutes is a scruffy diagram. Um, but I've probably got enough there uh, to uh, populate the uh, template that we use, the control, uh, the collect, consider, uh, conclude. And uh, so I'd, I'd then move to, uh, I'd slide across, get my Word document out, and start to add these figures in. But instead of doing it 0 to 132, uh, what I'd do is, uh, the, for those who've uh, used it already, we've got a template this way, where we put the timings down vertically, and then I'd add the annotation, I'd add the, the scans code, I'd add the words that were being said, and then in the end, I put the considerations. So what's the hypotheses here? The way I've been describing on this uh, sheet of paper. And then once the full sheet is populated, I'd then move into a conclusion of saying, uh, right, based on this, and I'd do some compare and contrast because we've got sufficient video footage that we've been targeted by the client to look at here to do some contrast between first and second half. If this was um, for a client, I wouldn't stop there. I'd, uh, I'd, get, I'd watch the whole documentary. And I'd go in and probably play it with my eyes closed at the end, see if I've missed anything in terms of audio, volume up and volume down. And then uh, I'd also turn the volume off and just watch the behavior. And is there anything that I've missed that um, seems to be significant that I can revisit and check against the account later on? Uh, and then um, the detail uh, comes in. It probably takes me about 15 minutes to, uh, which I'm not going to uh, bore you with because you've got these sheets as scans coders and uh, you're used to this as, as clients of ours, whether it's online or with the full MSC program. Um, that what we then do is we put in the codes of uh, the face, the body, the uh, content, the voice, the style and the psychophysiology. Uh, but for those of you who are used to 27 codes, uh, if you're not the scans coder people, uh, you'll, uh, you'll not know that we've got 136 codes. So what I have on, the, uh, on my sheet, I could probably reel them off if pushed, uh, but I, I, why, why try and memorize them and get them wrong, is I've got the subcodes for each one of the pins on two sheets of A4 uh, that I can check and contrast. So in other words, if I see a lip press that's a 24, I'll use, and if, if it's anomaly, which is not an anomaly here, uh, I'd use F1.24. Then I know it's um, a facial anomaly, uh, a, a non, <laughs> anomaly, but it's also um, something, uh, I've got the muscle movement, which is the lips pressing together, uh, indicated by uh, the right, towards the right-hand side here, I've got the 20.24. 20 
So it's a second level of code, 1 to 27, but we've got uh, altogether 136 codes, so I can be really detailed. So I could write it up, this up, put these subcodes in, and send it to someone who doesn't speak English. Um, and uh, they would know what's going on with this video, as long as they could link it to the words that I'm linking it to in my narrative. And that's, uh, that's, that's the meat of the, um, of the process I would go through. And um, it's probably times two. Uh, the, the thinking and the voicing I've been doing with you is exactly what's going on inside my head. Um, normally I'd work alone because if I need to corroborate this for a client with interrater reliability, I'd not want anyone contaminating with, um, uh, with my work. So they get the video, the same briefing document, they do their sheets, they transpose it into the collect, consider, conclude sheets, and then we'd look for interrater reliability in terms of the two, three or four people that are coding this. Depends on the stakes involved uh, and if we're doing this for a TV program the stakes are high because we've got millions of people including other behaviour analysts and scientists and um, psychologists watching this and so everything I claim needs to be substantiated with research and that document um, which <laughs> You, you see, you're all familiar with the full document, but that document that will be populated with the codes um, then is submitted into the client for full disclosure. So if anyone takes uh, umbrage uh, with our report or our conclusions, uh, or wants to sue us or challenge us, uh, then the clients have got full disclosure of the, uh, the detail behind the things that we will be saying uh, or writing in a report or in a documentary. And you'll notice um, we've only had to look at the video probably twice, once real time, and then second, taking the chunks which went into our pocket where we saw some clusters and some information. And we've gone back just to populate that and add a few codes. When I'm completing that document, of course, I will go back and double check and verify have we missed anything um, that I've just voiced already that's on my uh, quick and dirty sheet. So I hope that helps. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good luck with your coding, and uh, thanks for now. Bye.